Great. So uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, this is the unfiltered session on the introduction to triage packages, uh, how, how is our triage operation being done at GitLab, um, the bugs that come in, feature proposals, and how we cut through the noise and the volume um, of being an enterprise open source um, product. Uh, I'm Mac. I'm the director of quality. And on the call, I also have Craig Gomez, uh, our engineering manager. Um, as well. So yeah, with that, um, I've outlined uh, uh, a rough cur curriculum here that we will go over. And um, uh, questions uh, Craig is uh, going to ask me on the fly and grill me, so hopefully I do a good job answering all the questions. But this is the first of many to come on, um, on opening up the doors and training people how to use um, triage more efficiently, how to triage more efficiently. So with that, I'll go through um, uh, what is uh, trash operations at GitLab. We have a page here in the quality department handbook um, defining uh, the current triage um, automation and operation. The context behind this is that we receive roughly 300 to 400 issues every week in GitLab CE and EE repos. And those are just CE and EE. There are other projects, for example, Gilly, uh, CI runners, um, Gitter, and all that, uh, all the other, I would say, satellite projects. They have new issues coming in as well, but the main um, traffic would be in E and CE. Uh, accountability is off the top. Um, we, as a quality department, do not um, do all the triage for everybody. We trust every teams and groups to do this with their peer counterpart, engineering managers, and product managers, and um, to use their priority severity definitions and slot them into a, a milestone or a timeline. There are two triage packages I want to go over over today. First is the new issues and, and new newly created unlabeled issues. Currently, the quality engineering team is doing this every day. Like one engineer, um, uh, I'll, I'll click on an example for us here. One engineer is in charge of looking at this um, every day, and we fan it out. Um, uh, to, to two or three issues per engineers. This is a bad example because um, I think this is stale already. So let me click through this and uh, see if we have a good one to share. And second. Okay, this is a good one. This is the latest one. So the format has been improved quite a bit. So we uh, call it all the engineers uh, handles and then just divide them by the number of new issues coming in. It's been working really well so far. Um, the, the initial trial is just pegging it to a, a DevOps stage group, roughly uh, an engineering manager or product manager if possible, and then add a severity label. And the rest, um, it's then uploaded to the, those groups. The second level of, of, of triage, I would, I would say, is the um, complete triage at the stage level. Uh, these are packages created every week that lists feature proposals, um, backend bugs, and frontend bugs for that engineering manager and product manager pair. Uh, an example for this would be, uh, let me click on this for a second. Um, this is, this is a, the, the old one as of today. It's in, it has been changed quite a bit. Um, sorry, this is the new one as of today, I'm sorry. Uh, we have a heat map here now that shows the distribution of the bugs for that group. Um, so this is uh, it, bugs list by priority and severity, and you can see how many of them fall into um, like low severity and low priority, and then up the top uh, left-hand corner is the highest priority and highest severity. And this is what I mean by um, a collaboration of product managers and engineering managers. The first section are feature proposals. These are feature proposals that are uh, on schedule or sale, we request um, the product manager to see if it's applicable, re close it, if it's duplicate or it's not, no longer adding value. If not, then please schedule it to, um, to a best estimate milestone or, or a backlog milestone. Uh, if you scroll down, uh, there will be two sections. I think this, this stage group plan is doing very well. Because there's no, I don't see any bugs for front end. It means they're done with their front end bugs, essentially, which is great. But if there are front end bugs, there'll be one section for front end bugs. And, and we have currently three back end bugs for um, Sean, which is the back end engineering manager. Um, with that, I'll take a pause here. Um, 
Craig, do you have any questions uh, for the audience or yourself? I do. Um, so the three questions I wrote down so far, um, who can add labels? Since you said a lot of these issues come in from the community, I can get hundreds. So who can add labels, who can assign to epics, and who can add milestones to the issues that are incoming? Uh, who can add labels? Everybody who works at GitLab can add labels. Um, currently, there's a, an ask for engineering managers and, and product managers to add um, severity labels. But in the coming uh, iterations, we're going to let everybody add them because our severity uh, definitions is clear. Anybody at GitLab can roughly assess and add a severity label. However, when it comes to priority and milestones, which is um, it, it needs to be reflected in team planning and grooming. Currently at GitLab, product managers are in charge of scheduling uh, things that go into a release with the input of their engineering manager counterparts. So um, ideally, I would say uh, engineering manager sets the priority and inform the product manager, and then, then the product manager comes in and sets the milestone and see if corrects the, the, the priority so it's aligned um, with, the, with, the, with the milestone. Is that still locked down to only GitLab employees? Yes, yes. Okay. Mostly because reporters of a project cannot add labels. It's only right. um, developers, um, maintainers, and, and so on. Are there any labels that community members can add at all? Uh, no, this is a great question. Um, and we probably would like another uh, unfiltered session on community contributions. We do have a triage package just for community contributions and especially okay. community merge requests. And these are, I think we have an example here. These collects the merge requests submitted by a non GitLab employee or a non core team member. And then uh, we fan this out to uh, GitLab coaches and we have a Slack channel for that for um, MR coaches. And um, we just help help the community push through. Um, but going back to your first question, uh, they cannot add the labels. So this is designed to help them out. All right, thanks. That's great. Do um, you have any more questions, Greg? Okay, uh, we, we do another pause uh, before um, the, the next content and then we can dive in more. Okay, so we went through that already. Let's go back to the agenda. And um, uh, I think we talked about this already. We talked about the importance of triage packages and we, we took a look at the complete triage done by um, um, uh, the PM and EM pair. So I have an example of this running already that's generated this week. Um, and as of right now, the heat maps there, I think this is managed. So you should see feature requests, feature proposals. And I think this is, oh, it's great. I think they're done with the front end bugs as well. So this is only the back end uh, list of bugs. Um, oh, this is even better. So for this package, um, I think there are no outstanding uh, feature proposals that are not scheduled. So this is great. Um, uh, if a team does really well, uh, we would see less of the checkboxes and then it would just be a really thin, thin report. The best one would be all the sections are empty and you just see a heat map of like, okay, this is like what I have in the backlog roughly and then I have to try to anything. So this is great. I think your team is making great progress here. Very, very happy about it. Um, and then uh, my last one is uh, to revisit the priority and severity definitions. Oh, I'm, I'm also going to say um, that we will look at um, uh, triage package two out um, as well um, okay so we went through the, the the current iteration that has a heat map um, we have a v2 coming out uh, this takes it a step further by capturing with a high emphasis on customer affecting issues so the the, the format is here uh, the heat map will still be there but now we have we add another section that has the customer label. So like bump up the priority. This is like the feature proposal, but we're slicing it by um, the customer label. And we're doing the same for um, front end bugs and back end bugs as well. We also want to improve the clarity. The instructions are now right up top and um, it, it shouldn't be 
uh, like you do this, you that, you that, do that section. I think the EM and PM pairs we need to collaborate together um, uh, on the list. Uh, uh, and then on the 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 bottom of the the package, this is still new in the works. Uh, we have started to tag bugs um, that have missed their uh, target SLOs. So P1 is 30 days, P2 60, P3 90 days. Uh, we're collecting data right now. There's no action items, but um, we will list. These are your current bugs that are. Um, uh, it needs a closer look to see if it's aligned or not, or the priorities need to be re revisited uh, if it's if it's um, uh, still truth. Um, any questions here, Greg, on the the V two? Um, no, not on V two. This is great. Um, I had more questions around the process. So, the creation of these these triage packages is automatic, right? And what's the distribution for these? Who, who gets pinged on these so they know to look or they're notified that it was created? Uh, this would be engineering managers, back end and front end, and the product managers for a given group. Okay. And then how often are these sent out? These are done every Monday, every week. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, so with that, we will revisit the uh, priority and severity definitions. Uh, this has changed and been updated quite a bit. So I have some links here. I'm just going to take advantage of our self-documented triage packages. <laughs> uh, the definitions are in our um, uh, documentation. It's under issue workflow markdown. So again, for priority, uh, it's a target SLO, which only applies to feature bugs and security vulnerabilities. This has been signed off by Kathy, our senior director of security as well. Uh, so P1, um, uh, the fastest uh, uh, the target SLO is 30 days. P2, 60. P3, 90 days. And P4 is, is um, the rest per se. Uh, this is anything more than 120 days. So probably the next quarter, if that's um, putting it on calendar terms. Uh, for severity, um, there has been some improvements here as well. Uh, this used to be two tables and with input from Christopher and also uh, Marin, we have compacted down so it's easily readable and inferable. So S1 blocker, this is um, an example of customer can't do anything, like a feature is blocked, broken, there's no workaround, outages um, and impacts 50% or more of users, um, as an example, this outage. Uh, S2 is, I would say, a, a broken feature with a very complex workaround. So you can still kind of use it, but you need to fiddle with a URL or like log into a command line and do something to work. And, and the effort on, on the workaround is, is um, uh, not lovable or very complex. Um, impacts. Uh, um, 20 to, to half of our users and large portions of GitLab.com. There's a, a slight um, uh, dimension on performance degradation as well. Uh, we haven't been using this as much. Uh, this has been carried over from our previous AP labels, um, but for performance um, on GitLab.com, uh, I think the infrastructure team is using this to, um, to label their, their issues. S3, I, I would say the majority of our bots should be S3. Uh, it's essentially, it's a bug. Um, it's not blocking. It has a workaround, and the workaround is uh, is acceptable. For example, um, if uh, I would say you need to create an issue, but then you can't do it from from one page. You need to navigate two more clicks to another page to clear create an issue, or you need to refresh to get the status. You don't get it right away. Um, the impact is less than twenty five percent, and limited impact on significant portions. These two are very much related. Uh, we recently added affected users because that has a number that can be measured. Um, we will probably revise the language here a bit uh, so it's, um, it's, it's, it's more clear. S4 is the rest. Um, uh, inconvenience, color changes, uh, alignment on the, on the UI, and, and, and such. Um, any questions, Greg, or anything at all? Yeah, is there, do we have an SLO either um, 
implied or documented on an S1, right? Because typically that's something about it instead effects. Well, as it says here, impacts 50% or more users, something we should jump on. Do we have any kind of response that we guarantee with those or? Yeah. Um, it's, our oh, SLOs are tied to priorities. So if it's an S1, it would normally get a P1. And mm -hmm. the reason these two are separated because if you may have a large number of bugs on the same bucket, mm -hmm. a priority bucket, and to chip away at that backlog, you need another dimension to schedule. For example, if you have, say, a thousand S3s, you cannot have an SLO on those because it means that you need to complete a thousand, you need to fix a thousand bugs within 90 days. So, like, and a, a number of those might be done faster. So like that S3 can, some of them can fall into the P2 bucket, some in the P3 bucket, and some in the P4, or maybe in the backlog, cause like we just can't get to this right now, but it has an, an, an S3, which is, um, it tells you the impact. Uh, right. I would say that the, the, this, the, mo the most of the S1s would be P1s, and then the rest, like, I've seen S4s that are P1s as well. It's like, the color is really off and it looks really strange at the front of the page of get the color, like let's fix it now. So that allows the, the, the dimensionality to be sliced further uh, into more, more achievable buckets per se. Yeah, sorry, that makes a lot of sense. I was thinking S1 more of like site-wide type outage, but um, as I'm rereading this, it's more about an individual feature not working. So that makes sense. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's a revisit about priority and severity labels. Um, uh, I think we're moving towards the end of the, the content now. So with that, I'm going to close out with the, the rollout plan on our label changes. And I think it's important to discuss it here as well. Um, currently the trash packages is, uh, relying on the previous team labels, but they're now evolved into stage ops, sorry, DevOps stage labels. Uh, with that, there's a rollout plan on how we're going to transition. Uh, it's going to go area by area. As the, the labels get changed, we will transition the pa triage package to also apply at the DevOps stage level as well. And then once teams have gathered into groups, then um, we will narrow it down. Um, ideally, at the end, we will see a triage package for, for a given group. Um, um, probably uh, by the, I would say, maybe sometime in Q3 when all the teams have settled down their respective groups. Uh, any questions you'd like to ask? Great, okay then. Um, uh, so uh, we're gonna post this recording on the GitLab Unfiltered YouTube channel. And I would like to thank, thank Craig for participating today. This is the first of many to come. Next week, we'll be um, diving deeper into the triage package V2 and how, how that's going to play um, with the stage, stage ops split and things as well. So yeah, with that, um, please uh, follow along in the YouTube channel. And uh, thank you, Craig.